Deep within the natural beauty of Riding Mountain National Park, there is history untold. Before boundaries, before there was a park, even before European settlers arrived, there were people here for thousands of years. Our ancestors lived here, eh? And that's what seems to bring me here, because something spiritual here. Riding Mountain is a natural preserve where a national park was created by the government of Canada in 1929. The park is a model for the world because of the balance that is established between protected ecosystems and the people who visit them. There has been, however, a serious error that is only now being addressed. A piece of the park's history, indeed the very foundation upon which it is built, has been neglected and ignored. Long ago, the Aboriginal people known as the Riding Mountain Ojibwe lived throughout this area, thriving for generations. I would say that we were a very organized type of people, a self-sufficient people that's before the time of uh, the discovery. Not only men, but women worked hard as well too. Hey, 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 hey. I guess everything was here. <laughs> All the animals and berries and medicines, and this is where they were, right here. And they survived good. People were, were made aware of how we should respect what we had, the, the moose, the elk, the deer, and also the fishing. They respected everything, anything that gave them life, like water food, everything was spiritual to them, because the Creator made it. By 1871, the Kiskun Ojibwe First Nation signed Treaty No. 2 with the Crown, and they continued their traditional lifestyle at Indian Reserve 61A on Clear Lake's North Shore. Well, it was a loving kind of community. Everybody helped each other, the neighbors helped each other. If another family their family bought in an animal, like a moose or an elk, or they all went and helped prepare everything. Take the meat home and dry it, and help each other drying the meat. It gives, it gives me a lot of memories when I come here uh, and uh, I think about uh, my people. It was a fishing station because wherever the reserve was located, there had to be a fishing station. When the white people first came to, to the community here, they gained a lot of uh, knowledge from the Aboriginal people, like the way of uh, survival and how to work in a, in a, in a region like this, I guess. Well, our family was very good friends with the natives. In the summertime, there would be uh, natives coming from all over for powwows and fishing and it was a very active place at times. But this life changed when the government of Canada set aside this part of Kisikono Ojibwe territory as a natural preserve and a national park. When I talked to my dad, he said the people were all happy here. And, uh, you know, it, it was that way till uh, late 1920s, you know, when they, they started to these discussions on turning, you know, Riding Mountain National Park into, uh, into a park. Next thing you know, the, our people were being pushed away from here. They were told to get out of the reserve because this was the, the park was going to own this. We knew that the, the people had been taken out off the reserve, but no, we didn't know that they were going to burn the houses till we were sitting out on the doorstep one night and saw the smoke. They burned the houses, they burned the barns. There was uh, one family that had these horses burned right in the barn. Well, all we saw was fires. 
There was a bunch of the wardens. I shouldn't say a bunch. I don't know how many there was. Maybe two or three wardens burning them. Dad was hurt pretty bad when they had to move out of here because this is where they started. They had a good life here. The displaced residents were relocated 20 miles west at one of their settlements near Elphinstone. Not a nice time in, in history for Parks Canada and certainly and for the federal government. There was a 60-year hiatus uh, where, where First Nation communities, including Kisi, were totally alienated from what was a part of the very important part of their traditional territory. Uh, there was a disconnect from the land and um, the whole idea of protected areas uh, was totally devoid of any sort of uh, First Nation worldview. It was a situation that had to change. Over three decades, successive chiefs and councils of the Kiskon Ojibwe First Nation fought for and eventually reclaimed their traditional territory inside Riding Mountain National Park. As a result of a desire by both parties, facilitated by uh, changes in government policy and land claim processes, uh, we've been able to start the road to reconciliation. This new relationship enables First Nations to now have a role in the park. Parks Canada can pursue its objectives and goals while relying on the knowledge and wisdom of the Kiskon Ojibwe First Nation. People don't know that uh, the actual ecological integrity of the national park prior to its uh, establishment uh, really involved uh, the First Nations. Uh, they were a part of the, the ecosystem. Uh, they maintained a balance. This area is a part of the traditional territory and they have an awful lot of knowledge and understanding about uh, the resources, both natural and cultural. The shared vision between First Nations and Parks Canada is creating a new future for the region. In this spirit, a sharing lodge has been established in Wasegmin by the Akiskon Ojibwe First Nation. This is a perfect opportunity to, uh, to hear and learn about uh, First Nations culture and history. I think that's good for the younger generation, for the younger people to learn about their culture. Finally, we're having uh, some First Nations that are beginning to tell their own story. And I think that's one of the greatest things a person can do is get us together and talk about the past. Through dialogue and cooperation, the lessons of the past will never be forgotten. Now, the complete history and age-old wisdom of this area's ecology can be preserved and shared with future generations. <laughs>